Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard, and in this episode, we're going to learn how we can use data augmentation on images using TensorFlow's Keras API. Data augmentation occurs when we create new data by making modifications to some existing data. We're going to explain the idea a little bit further before we jump into the code, but if you want a more thorough explanation, then be sure to check out the corresponding episode in the Deep Learning Fundamentals course on deeplizard.com. For the example that we'll demonstrate in just a moment, the data we'll be working with is image data. And so for image data specifically, data augmentation would include things like flipping the image either horizontally or vertically. It could include rotating the image. It could include changing the color of the image and so on. One of the major reasons we'd want to use data augmentation is to simply just get access to more data. So a lot of times not having access to enough data is an issue that we can run into and we can run into problems like overfitting if our training data set is too small. So that is a major reason to use data augmentation is to just grow our training set. Adding augmented data to our training set can in turn reduce overfitting as well. All right, so now let's jump into the code to see how we can augment image data using Keras. All right, so the first thing that we need to do, of course, is import all of the packages that we will be making use of for this data augmentation. Next, we have this plot images function, which we've introduced earlier in the course. This is directly from TensorFlow's website, and it just allows us to plot images to our Jupyter Notebook. So check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizard.com to get the link so that you can go copy this function yourself. All right, so next we have this variable called gen, which is an image data generator. And recall, we've actually worked with image data generators earlier in the course whenever we create our uh, train, test, and valid batches that we were using for training CNNs. With this, though, we are using image data generator in a different way. Here, we are creating this generator that we are specifying all of these parameters like rotation range, width shift range, height shift range, shear range, zoom range, channel shift range, and horizontal flip. So these are all options that allow us to augment our image data. So you need to check the documentation on TensorFlow's website to get an idea of the units for these parameters because they're not all the same. So for example, uh, rotation range here, I believe is measured in radians. Whereas like this width shift range is measured as a percentage of the width of the image. So these are all ways that we can augment image data. So this is going to be rotating the image by 10 radians. This is going to be shifting the width of the image by 10%, the height by 10%, uh, zooming in, uh, shifting the color channels, flipping the image. So all sorts of things. So just all different ways that we can uh, augment image data. So there are other options too. just be sure to check out the image data generator documentation if you want to see those options. But for now, these are the ones that we'll be working with. So we store that in our gen variable. Next, we are going to choose a random image from a dog directory that we had set up earlier in the course under the dogs versus cats data set. We're going to go into train, into dog, and then we are going to choose a random image from this directory. And then we're going to set this image path accordingly. So we're just going to set this to point to whatever that chosen image was on disk. And then we have this assertion here just to make sure that that is indeed a valid file before we proceed with the remaining code. Now we're just going to plot this image to the screen. And I'm not sure what this is going to be since it is a random image from disk. So that is a cute looking, I don't know, beagle? beagle basset hound mix. I don't know. What do you guys think? So this is the random dog that was selected from, uh, from our dog train directory. Now we are creating this new variable called aug iter and to our image data generator that we created earlier called gen, we are calling this flow function and passing our image into flow. 
and this is going to generate a batch of augmented images from this single image. So next we are defining this aug images variable, which is going to give us 10 samples of the augmented images created by aug iter here. Lastly, we are going to plot these images using the plot images that we defined just above. All right, so let's zoom in a bit. All right, we can see now that first, let's take a look at our original dog. All right, so that is the original image. Now we can look and see that given those things like rotation and width shift um, and everything that we defined earlier whenever we defined whenever we defined our image data generator, that has now been done to all of these images in one random way or another. So we can see kind of what's happening here. So for example, this particular image looks like it has been shifted up some because we can see that the head of the dog is being cut off a little bit. And um, this image, or let's see, which way was the dog originally facing? So its head is facing to the right. So yes, so this image here has been flipped. The dog is now facing to the left. And uh, this image appears to be shifted down some. And so uh, some of these, uh, like this one, looks like it's been rotated. So we can get an idea just by looking at the images, the types of data augmentation that have been done to them. And we can see how this could be very helpful for growing our data set in general. Because for example, say that we have uh, a bunch of images of dogs, but for whatever reason, they're all facing to the left. And we want to deploy our model to, um, to be some general model that will classify different dogs, but the types of images that will be accepted by this model later might have dogs facing to the right as well. Well, maybe our model totally implodes on itself whenever it receives a dog facing to the right. So through data augmentation, given the fact that it is very normal for dogs to face left or right, we could augment all of our dog images to have the data or to have the dogs also face in the right direction as well as the left direction to have a more, um, to have a more dynamic data set. Now there is a note in the corresponding blog for this episode on deepblister.com giving just the brief instruction for how to save these images to disk if you want to save the images after you augment them and then add them back to your training set. So check that out if you're interested in doing that to actually grow your training set rather than just plot the images here in your Jupyter notebook. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deepblizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.